So it's a real repro easily and reproducible and predictable effect, and we've turned it PIPs. Photon-induced photoacoustic streaming. There's been studies on this back in 2000. There was some, some, some studies that were done about NDAG and uh, photoacoustics. Um, also in there was a comparison of the continuum of YAG and showed photoacoustics with water versus no water and just kind of measuring that. So this, this phenomenon has been studied, just hasn't been really brought out to the forefront and hasn't been utilized in, in what we've actually found great use for it for. So here I am going into the mesial buckle 2. And I'm going to fire the laser and look at everything that comes out of the MB1. If you look long enough, you'll also see little pieces of uh, nerve tissue and debris coming out here. Watch, you'll see it float here in a minute, like right about here. There it Again, three-dimensional streaming and cleaning of the root canal system with PIPs. Streaming and cleaning. So we were extremely excited when we saw this because we thought, oh my gosh, if we can just get the PIPs effect to be placed in any one of these canals, the effect could be seen in all the canals. But you've got nice, um, you can see the nice bubbling and moving of the fluid in the chamber. And the question is, what's happening down in the root system when we do this? What in your mind's eye is happening where you can't see it? What's happening to the fluid? Where is it going? How is it cleaning out the, the canal system? And that's these are the results that we're getting. This is the kind of SEMs, that, as I've shown you, this is kind of a compilation video of everything that we've, we've shown you. I've got a couple more SEMs to show you that you haven't seen yet that we'll show you in a minute, and I think we'll knock your socks off. And let's just say it knocked our socks off, <laughs> our latest round of SEMs, as we've uh, improved on, on utilizing PIPs in the root canal system. So here, here's what we did on, on this. So what, what, this is um, an example of how, of how the photoacoustics actually works and how the PIPs uh, actually works. Um, we took a vial and we used a 50 microsecond pulse duration with uh, the Lairs Power Laser AT. You'll watch what happens here when you uh, watch this, this uh, test tube here. 50 microseconds, 50 millijoules, 15 hertz, PIPs tip. Violent. Once again, the same settings. We didn't change the power. We just changed the tip and the design. And, and that was a, a rather large volume of uh, liquid. If you think about the amount of liquid that is inside a canal system, it is maybe one one thousandth of what we had there. And the effect becomes exacerbated with the diminution of fluid. The less fluid, the more pronounced the photoacoustic effect is. So this is basically what happens when it fires. Most of the energy comes out the end just by virtue of the, uh, the, t the angle that's cut, and some of it comes out, smaller energies of it come out. So you get this kind of uh, extra, uh, uh, a heating of the molecules that occur here, and you get an expansion effect. It's almost like a micro explosion, a tsunami, so to speak, and you get this radiation. The beauty of this was that even though it was the tip was not placed at the end of the apex, it could be placed farther away from there. The effects were still seen far away. As you'll oh. see in a few, just yeah, in a few minutes. Yeah, you'll see that. So, uh, conventional, radial, and non-ablative. We get this, uh, this expansion effect that occurs, and it's like a pressure wave. And it travels between 7 and 12 meters per second. This was measured by our, our group, uh, and they were able to uh, determine what, by using those numbers, we can determine what the flow rate would be as we introduce liquids. Uh, you were asking me about some of the settings on, on some of the other units. When you go to a 50 microsecond pulse rate, if you can drop the millijoules, which we did, to 20 millijoules, the lowest in any of the literature, and still get a tremendous increase in the photoacoustic effect, you've taken that whole thermal thing out of the picture. We're no longer worrying about if we're going to overheat the canals or the liquid. And so that brings it into a different category. So all the people that are saying lasers don't work because you have to worry about the thermal effects or you have to be careful or it depends on how you extract the fiber. I mean, all of these things that made it just impossible, we've eliminated all that. All you have to do is introduce this to the fluid and let the fluid do its thing and we'll show you what we mean by that. 
Everybody who does endo deals with this. If you don't know it, I'm telling you right now, it's called vapor lock. You inject your fluid, whether it be RC, I mean EDTA, water, and you get this vapor lock because as it gets smaller and smaller, the fluid can't get there. And of course, if you don't go in here and clean this out, this is the part that remains always contaminated. And by the way, this is the part that fails usually. In 80% of the, your endo cases, they fail in the apical one-third, not out the lateral. So no matter what you do, I'm, I'm, we're placing liquid in, we're extracting it out. Whatever we do, we still can't get to that. Next one. We'll go through quite a few of these here. Here I am at a closer shot. There's my 28 gauge needle. I'm, I'm pumping it in, pumping it out. The canal curves around the corner. You can't get the tip to go around the corner. You keep drawing out the fluid, putting it in. Maybe you inch up a millimeter or so, but still the last three or four millimeters, you just can't negotiate. If you can't get them clean, it doesn't matter what system you use. And it really doesn't matter what size you file these out to. I mean, you gotta take them up to about a 70 or an 80 size file or above to be able to get any kind of adequate irrigation um, at the, at the peri-apex there. Oh, that's another thing that kills me. Sorry, I gotta tell you this. The research has got 60 to 70 uh, size ISO files. They're using all these testings with 60 to 70. They are hogging out and compromising that two structure by using a bigger file. Why are they doing that? Because of this very factor right here. If they can't get around this area, then they'll just use consecutively a bigger and bigger and bigger file. And as you increase the diameter of the file, you start to encompass some of the delta fibers that you couldn't get to. But you compromise the tooth strength-wise and also long-term, longevity. So here we are again, we're placing it in, I'm, I'm sucking the, uh, the fluid out, and then I'll put it back in again, and then what I'm noticing is I'm not getting very much of an effect, I still have this. Now I'll place our tip right here without bringing it in, and look at the activity we get. The tip is over here, and the activity is still seen distant. We get dramatic volumetric changes, and our, our studies show, look at all that red fluid has been washed out within 20 seconds. Withdraw the tip, I'll place the, our, our little pips tip, it's somewhere way up here, and the next thing you know, bingo. Look at the fluid starting to clear out, getting clearer and clearer. We time this, 20 seconds is adequate. Anything less than that, you might still have fluid. That was one of the factors, but you can see how clear this is. Again, I said, let's go the other way. Let's fill it full of red fluid and just use water for those that you know, wanted to see it a, a different way. Here we are, we still have this apical one-third. I'm flushing water in and out. I'm getting some effect here, but still cannot negotiate the area there. Bottom line is, in school, I remember I was taught at the University of Pacific, you could never uh, irrigate a canal enough. You just couldn't do it. So they asked me to do it in between each file. Plus, we were students, we didn't know any better. But I understand why, because if you, don't, if you don't really get a good job of cleaning this out, and we did it between every file, and I'd be willing to bet a lot of dentists don't do that between every file, well, you're always going to have this area that's, that's, you're setting yourself up for failure long term. All right, and there you go. There's that uh, dramatic... This is not cavitation, by the way. Someone said, well, isn't this cavitation? The true definition of cavitation is a change from a liquid to a gas. We're not changing anything to a gas because the energy levels are so low. We're not, oh, we're not superheating this. This is a shock wave effect that's occurring. Pips. Continuation of fluid. The less fluid, the more photon induced. We'll go to the next one. Mm-hmm. Just the fluid alone and no water, look. Here's my tip right here, look over here. That's unbelievable. That, now we don't have to worry if the, if the root is curved or it's dilacerated or whatever. As long as we can get fluid in the canal and then by virtue of pips and the special design that we have with this laser system only, you can go ahead and use that, that, uh, that phenomena to negotiate canals that you couldn't reach before without having to open them up and, and over-instrument them. That's the beauty. We're becoming more and more minimally invasive in our approach. The literature says 30, between 30 and 40 is probably the side you should end on. You will see a lot of our, 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 our cases we're going to show you have been instrumented to a size 20. Why? Because we don't need to instrument them out anymore. We're able to effectively clean those, those areas, those delta fiber areas out better. Here's a case, uh, just again, showing some more pips. We're going to show you some more videos of, of, of pips itself. Upper left molar, again, using the uh, pips tip. 
um, that we have for the power lays, placing the tip into just the orifice, cleaning out the mesial buckle two, and watching the material flow out of the mesial buckle one. And you can see the entire chamber, everything's moving in the chamber. When we've done this before on clear teeth, we actually are in one canal and can see photoacoustic action of the streaming in other canals while we're not even close to those canals. I used to joke with Rico that maybe we're doing root canals on the entire arch if we're doing just one tooth with pips because it's so powerful.